So everybody knows about trans arterial chemoembolization in HCC. It's not a new thing, but what new for, I think, for at least for me, uh, what I have gone through in the past week while I'm preparing, I was preparing this talk was the updates. So many of the things were very new to me too as well. So I'm so, uh, before the onset of this lecture, I would like to thank the organizing team of my own SGPGI, who used to be my alma mater. And it's so, it's a matter of honor and privilege to be here every time I visit my mother and mother institute. So with that, I start my talk, which is transarterial chemoembolization in HCC, the recent updates. So this is again how previous. So talking about the global burden of HCC, this pie chart shows this, this HCC being the sixth most diagnosed cancer worldwide. And the HCC itself accounts for 75 to 95% of the of all primary liver cancers. So the global scenario at present is the 33% of the 100% patients these are because of the hepatitis B virus infection. The next in the row is the alcoholic liver disease, which accounts for the 30% of the HCC globally. Third in this list is the hepatitis C virus, which accounts for approximately 21% of the hepatocellular carcinoma. Rest 16% by the other. So coming on to the epidemiology in the Asia, in India, if you talk about, is the same trend, hepatitis B virus, followed by the alcoholic liver disease, and then followed by the hepatitis C virus. This accounts for the majority of the HCCs. So tumor board, as we all know, is indispensable in the treatment in the treatment part of the HCC while you are doing any sort of interventional procedure like transarterial chemoembolization, which includes the hepatologist, the surgical oncologist, diagnostic radiologist, interventionalist, the radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, pathologist, so on and so forth. So TASE is, as we all know, is the standard for intermediate stage hepatocellular carcinoma. That is the B group of B CLC classification. So the two majority type, uh, the two most prominent type of techniques which we use are the conventional taste and the drug eluting based taste. Anti-tumor effect of both has been reported to be similar. A brief differentiation between the two, the basics for the juniors. As we all know, the conventional taste in this, the intra-arterial injection of cytotoxic agents such as the doxorubicin or cisplatin emulsified in the oil-based radiopic agent like lipidol or vividol is done. In depth taste, here we, instead of this radiopic agent, we are using non-resorbable embolic mic microspheres. In conventional taste, lipidol delivers cytotoxic agents directly to the tumor and causes embolization of the tumor microcirculation. However, the sustained targeted release of cytotoxic agent with the help of DC, with the help of drug eluting beads, is seen in the depth type of taste. Intratumoral retention in conventional taste help in the post procedural imaging as well, which enables the which enables in the prediction of the treatment response, which is not seen in the drug eluting beads. So the standard, uh, we all know the conventional state is the standard treatment for the intermediate stage hepatocellular carcinoma with the highest grade of recommendation. And last but not the least about the DCBs, generally beads of 100 to 300 micron size have been most commonly used. However, in recent times, the sizes of 70 to 150 and sometimes even the smaller 30 to 60 micron have been recently evaluated for their efficacies. Comparing, uh, since 
my talk is more of like a less of images, more of literature. You people need to look at the efficacy. We will be discussing about the efficacy of conventional taste versus the depth taste. Several prospective studies and meta-analysis have compared the efficacy of conventional taste and depth taste and showed no significant difference in tumor response or the time to progression or the overall survival. In a very prominent multi-center RCT, the precision five, depth taste failed to show a better tumor response than that shown by the conventional taste. There was no significant difference in the tumor response on MRI at the primary endpoint or the six month after the procedure. So the another study just related to the precision five, another precision Italia study group, which is a phase three trial, also failed to show a statistical difference in the tumor response time to progression and survival between the conventional and the depth days. This trial initially planned to enroll, it was planned to enroll 214 patients, but stopped due to the futility after 170, only the 177 patients were enrolled. So among the 177 patients, only 80, the 88 were in the conventional taste group and 89 were in the depth taste group. The one year survival rate among these were like 86% was in the depth taste group and 83% in the conventional taste group. While the two year survival rate was, all, was also equivalent in the range of 56 and 55%, which indirectly shows there was no statistical difference in the tumor response or time to progression or any sort of or any sort of survival data benefit. A recent uh, meta-analysis involving four randomized control trial and eight observational study confirmed the non-superiority of depth taste over conventional taste in terms of tumor response achieved and the one, two, and three year survival rate. After the efficacy, let's see how the conventional taste and depth taste uh, 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 weigh on the balance of the safety aspect. In terms of safe, safety issues, the most frequent adverse event that taste is the post-embolization syndrome, which is characterized by abdominal pain, fever, and ileus. Depth taste was expected to be associated with lower rate of adverse event, including post embolization syndrome. However, unexpectedly, depth taste failed to show superiority over conventional taste with respect to safety endpoints. In the same trial, the Precision 5 trial, the incidence of serious adverse event within 30 days from the procedure were only 20% in depth taste group and 19.4% in the trace group, which are also comparable. Overall, there was no significant difference in the adverse event rate in depth taste and C taste. So in addition, it has been recently reported that the frequency of arteriopotal shunt formation was significantly higher in child A patients who have undergone depth taste. Taken together, all these literature, the evidence is still insufficient to show that the depth taste is superior to conventional taste in terms of efficacy or we talk about the safety. Now coming on to the BCLC staging system, which with that we can we know that the BCLC system provides a comprehensive approach to staging and treatment selection for SCC patients. This staging system uh, recommends the taste is recommend as the treatment of choice for intermediate cell according to the latest uh, according to the previous or the latest guidelines. Taste is a well established. So this is all I I think I'm repeating it. So what need to be addressed is the what is new in our 2022 BCLC updated system. So it has a whole lot of new information we are getting through this BCLC 2022 update. What are the key points? So the key points uh, while we are looking through the previous version and this newer version BCLC 2022 is the first time inclusion of radio embolization in guideline which is recommended as a treatment for the early stage SCC, which was not there in the previous guidelines. Second important thing is the division of intermediate, excuse me, division of the intermediate cell, the B group into three subcategories, which eventually lead to different sort of therapy offered to the patient. 
Third is the patient with bilobar disease may be considered for combination therapy. So till date, we were not considering about the combination therapy, but in this update, we can see these patients with the bilobar disease can be considered for the combination therapy. Combination therapy in, in the form of taste combined with immunotherapy and others. Fourth point, which fourth key point, which we can observe in the BCLC22 is the integration of albumin bilirubin score and the alpha fetoprotein. This scoring system helps in prognostication. And the fifth is the introduction of the concept, concept of treatment state mi stage migration and untreatable progression. So these two terminologies, treatment stage migration and untreatable progression, I'll let you know in a few, in a few more slides. So these are the two very important study, the legacy study on to your left, which shows this was the basis where uh, this was this study was the only basis by which the BCLC 2022 included uh, included uh, trans arterial radio embolization in their classification in their recommendations. Then this study to your right is the I am brave study, which shows the use of at least atezolizumab and bevacizumab in unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma. And because of this study, we are able to see that atezolizumab and bevacizumab, they are now being considered as the first line treatment in the patient with unresectable carcinomas. Another study design, which is another study called the Himalaya study, was the basis with the help of this study, we are able to finalize that the two new molecules, the durvalumab and trimalumab, these are also considered as the for, these are also considered as the first line treatment in the patient of unresectable HCC. Now, after talking about the conventional tears and drug eluting tears, there is another in the past decade. There is another concept of the balloon occluded tears. So, as the word implies, balloon occluded tears means. We are delivering the drug to the tumor, but with the help of a small micro balloon by occluding the particular target artery with the help of micro balloon. So as with uh, this image shows, the upper image shows the conventional taste where there's no balloon and the lipidol emulsion is distributed not only to the taste, but also to the normal liver parenchyma. But in the lower picture, you can appreciate when the taste is being done with the help of micro balloon, there is change in the flow dynamics of blood inside the liver, where after inflating the balloon, the hepatic artery pressure decreases and the hepatic artery and portal vein pressure gradient gets smaller. So as we, as we evaluate in these cases, the tumor arteries are thick and have lower vascular resistance relative to the liver parenchyma, thereby the lipidol emulsion, it tends to flow mainly to the tumor cell, uh, tumor directly and not to the normal liver parenchyma, which is a great advantage. So being a great technique, it has a certain pitfalls. And one pitfall of balloon guide taste is the flow, uh, is there is a disturbance in the flow dynamics. Say, for example, in the upper schematic image, you can see that because the micro balloon is drastic, it drastically changed the hemodynamics. So if there is a communicating artery, like in this example, I'll show, okay, well, let's see the uh, below images where you can see the DSA, which is being done through the, which is a diagnostic, through the diagnostic, we, we can see that there are two branches supplying the large tumor with a large tumor blush. But the, after inflating the balloon, you can see that, uh, after the inflating the micro balloon into the target artery, you can see that beautiful blush has actually disappeared, which is happening because of the change in the flow dynamics, which is a drawback. So coming on to the applications of taste outside of intermediate stage, as by now we are we have learned that taste is for intermediate stage, but there are applications of taste which are outside the intermediate stage. 
So first one is the early stage. So, so the patient who cannot be benefited from the curative treatment, despite early stage disease, could be a good candidate for TACE. So this is actually, a, uh, we were talking about the treatment stage migration strategy. So initially we used to think that only the intermediate stage, no, no. Now it is like early stage SCC can be a good candidate depending upon the clinical parameters. So TACE can be used as new adjuvant chemotherapy before liver transplant. In such cases, TACE serves as a downstaging therapy, allowing a patient to become more suitable for liver transplant. And TACE sometimes also as a bridge therapy while the patient is on the wait list for the liver transplant. Several studies have demonstrated that TACE decreases the dropout rate from the waiting list of liver transplant. So next indication outside the intermediate stage, the advanced stage HCC, where we all know sorafenib is the treatment of choice for advanced HCC. And lenvatinib has also been recommended as a first-line systemic treatment after its non-inferiority to the sorafenib. So they are almost equivalent. More recently, the combination of atezolizumab and vivacizumab resulted in a better overall survival and progression-free survival than sorafenib which is a part of a guideline too. Another important thing regarding the treatment of advanced stage SCC with the help of TACE is the rationale for the application of TACE in SCC with portal vein tumor thrombosis. Is, uh, as we all know, when the patient had portal vein tumor thrombosis, the collateral vessel formation around the portal vein allows for the preservation of liver function, which in turn makes TACE possible in selected case with segmental or subsegmental portal vein tumor thrombosis. After talking about all these safety, efficacy data and extra intermediate indications of TAS, we should also know about the failure and refractoriness, failure and refractoriness of the TAS in, in the treatment of HCC. So meaning by we need to ascertain we need to we need to know when to repeat our we need to repeat our taste sittings or when to stop it so for this scoring systems has been designed one of the most prominent one which we currently use are the art score system and abr abcr score system where abcr means the alpha fetoprotein the bclc classification the child Q classification and the response score. The, need, the below given table, it's given here, gives you the point wise, how you point wise calculate the, uh, the various score before finalizing that this patient needs to have a second or third stage, third uh, repetition of taste or not. The fact that a, ART and ABCR score are not reflected in the current treatment guideline suggest that the neither score has been sufficiently validated. Though these scores are being, uh, being used by many clinicians, but till date, they are not sufficiently validated. So it is being said that the clinician should therefore make clinical decisions after the careful assessment of an individual patient, various uh, patients, various clinical features, rather than just relying entirely on these scoring system. So, uh, there are few rules to play to be played while, uh, while you are doing uh, taste in SCC. So first and the most important question is when to discontinue repeated taste. So for that, in that uh, context, there is a uh, randomized controlled trial by Low et al, where repeated taste was discontinued in a patient with poor hepatic function, severe adverse effect, or major progressive disease. So when we call it a poor hepatic function, it is defined as a presentation of hepatic, presentation of patient with hepatic encephalopathy, uncontrolled ascites, very cell bleeding, serum bilirubin more than three, serum albumin less than 2.8, and prothrombin time prolongation more than, more than four uh, seconds over the control. So the progressive disease when defined is based on an increased tumor size and AFP of more than 25% from the baseline. In another systematic review by Lovett et al., taste was discontinued when a patient presented child class C with gastrointestinal bleeding, with hepatic encephalopathy, uncontrolled ascites, and progressive disease 
including vascular invasion or extrahepatic spread. Unresectable tumor progression after taste involves massive liver involvement, vascular invasion, extrahepatic involvement, and minor tumor progression with deterioration of hepatic function or performance status. It is clear that the patient with this condition will not be benefited by the multiple sittings of the taste. So the Japan Society of Hepatology, they have given a criteria which define taste failure and refractoriness based on the following four indications. Number one is the progression of intrahepatic lesions. Number two is the continuous elevation of tumor markers. Number three is the vascular invasion. And fourth one is the extrahepatic spread. So that below given table, it shows that how these Japanese guys are evaluating to, to ascertain about, to know about the failure and refractoriness in the case of HCC being treated with the taste. So despite being uh, well acquainted by how the taste, when the taste, how, when to stop the taste is done, we need to have a basic knowledge about the molecular pathways responsible for the taste refractoriness. So for that, three main genes are being, con are being considered as the, uh, the culprit genes where which causes the taste refractiveness. Number one is the CMET gene. It has been associated. Number two is the P3, P53 gene mutation, which has been related to the taste failure and refractiveness. And the, finally, the SIRT7 gene expression is highly associated with taste refractiveness and poor survival. Coming on to the combination therapy, combination treatment with taste. So the combination treatment itself shares then when there is certain other modalities being used as a part of treatment with the taste. So first, first the most commonly done by the interventional radiologist is the taste with the radiofrequency ablation. So going through the literature, I found there is a, an ARS randomized control trial in patient with a solitary SCC lesion less than five centimeter in diameter demonstrate that sequential therapy with taste followed by the radiofrequency ablation significantly improve overall survival compared to the therapy with RFA alone. In this study, the one, three, and five year survival rate were 94, 69, 46% for the combination therapy and 82, 47, and 36% for the RFA alone. Another RCT demonstrated the superiority of taste RFA combination therapy of RFA alone in the, in the patient. In the patient, in the patient, the SCC lesion of diameter less than seven centimeter, with improvement in the both ov uh, overall survival and the recurrence-free survival rate. Another study uh, being published in 2017, where it shows that for smaller SCC lesion two to three centimeter in diameter, there was no significant difference in long-term therapeutic outcomes between taste combined with RFA and surgical resection, which implies that the taste RFA combination therapy could be an alternative treatment for patient with a single small HCC lesion for whom surgical resection, resection is unsuitable. Another <clears throat> important two important meta-analysis reported that taste combined with RFA was more effective than RFA alone, especially for the intermediate and large size HCC and in the younger patient with HCC. Now, coming on to taste with radiation therapy. So, according to the extensive meta-analysis, 11 randomized control trial and 14 non-RCTs treatment, treatment with taste plus radio, radiation therapy resulted in a significantly improved response and survival rate compared to taste alone in patients with unresectable SCCs. In addition, taste plus radiation therapy has shown a promising response rate and overall survival among hepatocellular carcinoma patient with macrovascular invasion in several observational studies. Based on these observational studies, a well-designed randomized control trial was conducted, which demonstrated the first-line treatment with TACE plus radiation therapy was well-tolerated and improved various treatment outcomes compared to those associated with sorafenib treatment among advanced stage HCC with max, macrovascular invasion. So this research, all the research provides a new treatment paradigm to treat patients with locally advanced HCC using a combination of taste and radiation therapy. 
But interestingly, this SBRT, the stereotactic ablative therapy, which is endorsed in other guidelines across the globe, has no role in updated BCLC 2022 classification. The need to be clarified. Maybe it get clarified in near future. Finally, uh, we are coming onto the taste with systemic therapy. This sort of combination therapy is a very promising therapy happening. Uh, and the, most of the research currently is now being on the combination therapy where, combi where the taste is being used with the, with the molecular targeted therapies. So this uh, diagram shows the various pathways, how these uh, molecular targeted therapies are being used. The first and the foremost important are the TKIs, which we commonly use these terms. We hear these terms from our uh, medical oncologist colleagues, which say we are using the TKIs. TK, TK is nothing but the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the anti-angiogenic agents. So uh, something about them, the taste, uh, Actually, when the taste is done in the patient, it causes tissue hypoxia that result in upregulation of VEGF factor, which may lead to tumor revascularization and local recurrence. In this regard, the combination of TKI with taste was expected to inhibit the revascularizing action of upregulated veg, VEGF gene induced by the taste. But accordingly, the combination of taste with anti-angiogenic agents may delay the may delay the tumor progression or recurrence and thereby thus improving the overall survival in patients. Tudo et al. demonstrated positive result of the TACTICS trial, which is a randomized phase two trial comparing, comparing the taste plus sorafenib with taste alone, which shows the promising result. The use of taste plus sorafenib resulted in a major improvement in, uh, in the PFS of uh, progression-free survival of 25 months in the taste plus sorafenib subgroup versus only versus the 13 months in the taste alone group. The most distinctive feature in this is that the new intrahepatic lesions were not regarded as the progressive disease because they do not imp imply treatment failure based on the natural tumor bio biology. So second, after the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, next one is the combination therapy of taste with the immune checkpoint inhibitors. Like we have already uh, heard about the durvalumab and vivacizumab, which have been included in the BCLC guideline. So something about them, there's another approach being investigated in combination of immune che checkpoint inhibitors with taste. The local regional therapies include TAS activate the host immune response by promoting local inflammation and triggering the release of tumor antigens. When these tumor antigens are released by the TAS, subsequent administration of immune checkpoint inhibitor drugs can prevent intrahepatic micrometastasis, which are typically undetectable and are the main cause of recurrences. So the important trial which is just which had just completed last month in January 2024 is the Emerald One Phase Three trial, which have uh, which has actually uh, uh, confirmed uh, or rather you should give a very promising data on, on the use of durvalumab and bevacizumab in combination of taste is the first line ICI based regimen. Globe, global phase three trial has shown statistical significant and clinically meaningful import, improvement in progression-free survival versus taste alone. So this uh, busy slide shows two very important uh, studies. One we have already, uh, I have already tell you about the about uh, about the last month trial, Durvalumab and the Bivacizumab trial, and which shows that ICI and the TKI combination therapy is can be and can be considered as a very promising one. So this again, the slide shows uh, the two important trials, the Emerald one and the Emerald three trial, with the Emerald one being concluded last just last last month, and the Emerald three trial it is using the trimalumab and druvalumab with with or without levatinib combination with the taste so this emerald 3 trial is uh, is expected to be uh, concluded by the end of 2025 so this the, it holds a very promising uh, 
prospect uh, while we are, we are expecting very good results from ml3 so continuing more about the various advancement and the updates in the field of taste there are models which can predict prognosis after taste so for these there are new prognostic models the most important one which is currently being used is the lbtae model which includes three factors the albumin bilirubin grading up to 11 criteria and the alpha fetoprotein levels the lbta model was superior to other prognostic models in both the training and validation validation data set as well as in overall cohort and this can be applied to selected patients excuse me who may be benefit who may be benefited most from the taste so next study which was conducted by han et al presented the taste specific model that permits accurate individual patient survival protection they built upon pre-taste and the post-taste model, which includes the first ever m resist response in addition to the baseline feature. This taste-specific model, based on the routinely available clinical features and response after the first taste, they permitted uh, patient classification into four different risk categories, where, wherein the median overall survival range from seven months to more than four years. The model and its online calculator Enable patient level prognostication, which may help physician rationalize the application application, and in determining the prognosis. Finally, newer uh, methodologies are being used like NLR, the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, which acts as a prognostic biomarker, has been associated with poor survival in SCC patient undergoing taste as a marker of systemic inflammation. NLR uh, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio is associated with cancer progression, metastasis, and prognosis in various cancers. NLR with other combination factor can promote survival prediction after taste, like platelet to lymphocyte ratio, ALST, uh, AST and ALT ratio, the CRP to albumin ratio. In addition, the prognostic score, including the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, was remarkable compared with the poor with the prior scores. Baseline NLR and its dynamic changes during therapy can predict overall survival in SCC patient treated with the taste. Now, a brief about the artificial intelligence in this world of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning. There is a branch called radiomics which is defined as the conversion of image to higher dimensional data and the subsequent mining of these data to allow improved decision support. So it is characterized by the extraction of quantitative imaging features from conventional imaging modality using computer-based algorithms and the correlation of these features with relevant clinical endpoints such as pathology, therapeutic response, and the survival of the patient. So, uh, a slide about this artificial intelligence. So this uh, uh, slide is being taken from the article by Meng from China, who uh, shows the volume of interest segmentation, followed by extraction of the data through feature extraction and thereby implementing it to calculate the uh, to calculate various other models for the testing cohort. So this slide shows uh, the Meng. Uh, the, uh, the publication by Meng shows that the C, uh, CT radiomics signature represented an independent, independent biomarker of overall survival. So, sure. So, uh, so in this, uh, the Meng at all, these, uh, he tried to calculate the onto the arterial and the portal venous phase he tried to uh, map uh, the tumor with the help of the volume of interest so majority uh, i am trying to i try to interpret this article but uh, not able to uh, decode it so much very well but what can i get through what he was trying to convey is that he is trying to map uh, every sort of uh, uh, volume calculation of the tumor in three dimension in the tumor and the peritumor area as well and after that 
going through some processing over the computer aided techniques he was trying to convey <clears throat> that the overall uh, and he tried to uh, incorporate these data set into the clinical picture and tried to uh, uh, tell about the radiomic signature which represent the which actually acts as a independent bio, biomarker for overall survival which i need to be as well maybe because if like if they are probably volume of so other latest advancement is the uh, use of nanotechnology in the taste where uh, we can see that uh, with the advent of nanotechnologies different sort of advanced beads are being uh, subjected to various uh, study and trials so these uh, nano formulations perform functions such as embolization chemotherapy photothermal therapy imaging drug delivery and drug control release so on and so forth Something about this uh, DC bead Lumi. Uh, this is being uh, used. Uh, this is being. I don't know whether it has been introduced in India or not. This is being. Uh, this product has been uh, basically uh, has been intended for use for uh, specifically to compete with the conventional taste, where these beads can be visualized on CT scan or the other uh, fluoroscopy techniques so that uh, in the after the embolization has been performed in the patient we can evaluate uh, uh, whether the target has it, uh, the drug has been delivered to the target or not so concluding all what he what i have talked till now is typically there are two types of taste the convention the depth taste Physician can use either technique with the knowledge that there is a higher risk of hepatobiliary, hepatobiliary injuries and a relative lower risk of post procedural pain after depth taste than in comparison to conventional taste. Taste can be used as for early stage as well as for intermediate stage disease if other curative modalities are not feasible and can be adopted as a new adjuvant treatment before liver transplant. In addition, taste can be considered when treating selected patients with subsegmental or segmental portal in thrombosis and preserve liver function, repeated taste can be determined based on the ART and ABCR scores. It is important to recognize taste failure and refractoriness and provide patients with more personalized therapeutic regimes. Combination therapy of taste with RFA radiation therapy is well established. Taste plus RFA is favorable for large SCCs, whereas taste plus Radiotherapy is special, specialized for SCC with vascular invasions. The research on the application of taste with systemic therapy is still actively going on, ongoing. And in particular, the combination of taste with immunotherapy is expected to have better results in recent future. Recently, new prognostic models, the LBTA model, 6 and 12 score, the taste specific models, the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio and the radiomics and deep learning have been develop to predict survival after the days. Thank you so much for the patient listening. Thanks.